Good evening, my brothers and sisters. This is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad therein. We thank you for tuning in to another study period with Pilgrim Baptist Church here in Newark, Delaware. We come before you this evening, and we ask that you will continue to pray one for the other. Let me inform those of the church family that our Men and Women's Day is coming up, amen, this Sunday. We are asking that those who have not, amen, paid their assessments that you will strive to do so. We are striving so that we can continue to spread the word of God and to do the things that we need to do here at the church. I also... I uh, want to say that those of you who have the Boscow passes, you can still pick them up this Wednesday or this Saturday because they are to be used on the 20th of the month, which is a Wednesday. You can come by for a $5 donation and you can pick up your passes. And we ask that you will continue to put our children on for our Sunday school on the 1st and third Sundays of each month, beginning at 8.45 to 9.15. So we ask that you will be diligent in doing this. Our children are our present and our future. Let us ground them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So brothers and sisters, we ask that you will pray for the bereaved, Pray for the careless and unconcerned. Pray for this nation because there are those who are, who are going through that of uh, uh, sorrows because of murders, because of attacks uh, that they did not warrant. Evil is present on every side. Come join us this evening as we speak to you from the 107th Psalm Amen. Praise God for past deliverance. Praise God for past deliverance. I pray that you enjoy the lesson coming your way this evening. And let us be mindful that praise will take us a mighty long way. Join us now in our study. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. This is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to another time of study with the family here at the Pilgrim Baptist Church in Newark, Delaware. We ask that you get your Bibles and your tablets and pens so that uh, we can uh, walk together through the scriptures that have been uh, given to us today. Our thought today is praise God for past deliverance. Praise God for past deliverance. I will be reading from the 107th Psalm, verses 1 through 9 and verses 39 through that of 43. Reading from the New King James translations, these words are written unto us this evening. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their souls fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. 
for he satisfied the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Verse 39 through that of 43 reads thusly, Again they are menaced and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. He pours contempt upon princesses and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet setteth he the poor on high from affliction and maketh him families like a flock. The righteous shall see it and rejoice, and all iniquity shall stop in their mouth. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we are truly thankful for a God of deliverance. Here we are given a call to worship by the psalmist. The psalmist writes here in 107, give thanks. It is good for men and women to give thanks for the goodness of God, for his mercy. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Here the psalmist opens up by allowing us to give thanks for everything that God has blessed us with. During these days and times in which we live, it seems as though many people are joyless. Many people don't have anything to praise and be happy about. But when we think of the goodness of God, when we think of how wonderful he has been to each and every one of us, we can recognize where the psalmist is coming from. Because of Israel's journey, because of Israel's plight, because of their, a man, imprisonment and bondage, out of which God had delivered them, we find that the psalmist says it's time to praise God for past deliverance. Sometimes we have to look back and we have to be reminded of how good the Lord has been to each and every one of us. When we look back over our lives and we take examination from where God has brought us to where God has delivered us from, we can't help but to just thank God for bringing us out of danger seen as well as unseen. Coming out of verse number two, he says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Verse number two is giving us, amen, our second point, and that is the reason for praise. The reason for praise is coming out of Exodus 6 and 6, where the Lord says, I am the Lord and I will bring you out of bondage. He's talking about delivering the children of Israel out of the bondage and slavery of the Egyptians. They had been there for 400 uh, years and now God, a man, had promised them that he would deliver them out of their hand. So he says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those who have been made free, those who have been delivered out of their troubles, their woes, and their levels of despair, God is saying, amen, through our psalmist, it's time to give me some praise. I have done wonderful things. So where is the testimony? This right here is giving when it says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So in other words, those of us who know how good God has been, those of us who know God's redemptive power should be the first to give testimony of how good God is. 
oh, we're living in a time when men and women want to take credit for everything. But we have to understand that we serve a sovereign God. Oh, I don't know about you, but the reason for all of us to praise him is because every good and perfect gift has come from him. So now the psalmist is bringing this up out of Exodus 6 and 6. As he, a man, listens to the Lord, as the Lord said, he would stretch forth his mighty arm and he would deliver Israel out of the hands of the Egyptians. So, brothers and sisters, it is good to give God praise. It is good to have a testimony of what God has done for each and every one of us. Oh, I, I come to bear record, amen, this evening that we have a whole lot to thank God for. He has brought us through toils and tribulations and trials. He has brought us, amen, and kept us from danger seen as well as unseen. So now he says, so whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Oh, he has protected us from danger seen as well as unseen. He has kept us when people wanted to bring us down, when people wanted to destroy us, when Satan has tried to captivate our minds uh, and destroy our hope. Amen. In a prosperous life on this side. So many people, amen, have become mental today. So many people, amen, are finding themselves in a world of distress and woe. All because they won't give their problems to the God of battles. God will fight our battles. So in verse number three, he says, and gather them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. So we look here how God had gathered up Israel and brought them out in the exodus, a man coming out of Egypt. Here he talks about bringing them back together again out of imprisonment from foreign enemies those who had scattered them, those who had, had enslaved them and had worked them and had mistreated them, all because of them being God's chosen people. Oh, there are so many all over the world today that if you go to second and third world countries, you will find that those who are Christians, those who are practicing, amen, the statutes of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ are being beaten, they are being killed, amen, in second and third world countries just for calling on the name of Jesus. So brothers and sisters, we serve a God of sovereignty. We serve a God of perseverance, amen. We serve a God who will preserve his people. Verse number four, and I want us to take note. In verse number four, he says, we ought to praise him now. Amen. Because of his time uh, of despair. When we are in despair, God is a God of deliverance. God is a God of comfort. God is a God that will bring us back to a greater understanding of his power, and his ability to handle every situation that we may encounter. Verse number four says, they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. This is where they were called the Hebrews. Hebrews, amen, was defined as wandering people. But this particular verse goes a little bit further. It takes us back, amen, to the book of Numbers, amen. And in the book of Numbers, verse number four, Numbers chapter 14, verse 33 through that of 35. We need to look at that because here is God's, amen, whipping post. Here is God, amen, bestowing a curse upon those who had murmured 
who would not, amen, adhere to God's, amen, word, amen. Here is when they were given their curse in the wilderness. In Numbers 14, 35, it says that uh, God, amen, would add a year for each day, 40 days, it would have taken them to get to where they were going. But God said because of their murmuring, because of them flapping their mouths and, and not being obedient, he was going to add a year to each day. This is coming out of, amen, Numbers 14, 33 through that of 35, because of their evil, because of their sin, because of their whoredoms, he, he cursed them for 40 days, became 40 years. Oh, brothers and sisters, we have to be careful how we murmur against God, how we can complain out of the goodness of God. And then he goes on to say, in the 90th, in the 90th Psalm, you will find that these words, amen, that God has given us three score, amen, and, 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 and four score years, amen, on this earth. Now, that was a curse upon Israel. When we look at time, and we said, well, God has given me four score. I made four score. No, God blesses us now according to, amen, our purpose being in this world. Three score, year and ten, and if by reason of strength, four score coming out of that. That wasn't for you and me. It was a curse on those who murmured in the wilderness. And the curse was 40 years. And God said, amen, coming out of numbers, that they would perish, they would die in the wilderness. Now, the history book of time says that they all perished except Caleb and Joshua. Those two came over into the land of Canaan. Brothers and sisters, we have to look back and see how wonderful God has been. Have we been faithful to God? Have we been doing what God is requiring us to do? Then he goes on to say, after we hasten on, hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. And when we look at this, we look at the fact that they were lacking in substance. They did not know where their next meal was coming from. And for 40 years, God took care of them. 40 years, God gave them water, gave them manna from heaven. Even a man allowed quails to come down when they cried from meat. Moses even gave them water out of a rock. Oh, how awesome a God we serve. So hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. As they wandered, amen, they found no city to dwell in. So God had them going in a circle. God had them just wandering in the wilderness for 40 years until the next generation came in order that they might believe and know who God really is. Then verse 6 says, And they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. This is a time of deliverance. When they cried, God had heard their cry coming out of Egypt. That's when God, amen, equipped Moses and sent Moses down to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Oh, brothers and sisters, amen, we've all been in a time when we need to be delivered. This was a time when they cried out to God. They cried out for deliverance. They cried out in the time of their trouble and their despair. Oh, I'm so glad that we are now under the blood. I'm so glad that we are under 
Amen. The power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So verse number six gives us a time of deliverance. All right, so let's look at this as we backtrack. In the beginning, we had a call to worship, giving thanks unto the Lord. And that was in verse one. Then we looked at the God being our redeemer, a reason to praise him in verse two. Then we look at how God had, amen, brought us into a time, out of a time of despair in verse number four. In verse number five, how hungry, how, amen, thirsty the souls fainted in them. So therefore, there has been a time when all of us was in a time of want and need. And then verse six says a time that God would deliver. Verse number seven says this, and he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. Now, brothers and sisters, the city of habitation was in the promised land. The city of habitation was in the city of Jerusalem, in the, in the, in the city of David. Amen. And here it is said that in verse 7, he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Now, Jerusalem needed a lot of work because of the destruction that had been brought up on it. And God had to prepare the way before they would even come back into that of Jerusalem. So therefore, he sent forth that of Ezra, coming out of Ezra 1, 2, and 4. And then he looks at Nehemiah. Ezra was the priestly one to come and bring about the spirituality, restore the understanding of the law to the Jews. And now we got Nehemiah who came and rebuilt the wall in Nehemiah 2, 5 through that of 17. So we have God's goodness at work. We have God's preparation for his people at work. We have God leading them the right way. So now in verse number 8, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for and for the wonderful work of the children of men. Now, when we look at this verse, verse number eight, we have to understand that God inhabits the praises of his people. God loves it when we are able to give him the glory, give him the honor for the wonderful things that he has done. Yes, they were, they were moving to exhort, amen, to encourage, amen, Israel to praise God for his past deliverances. Where they were and uh, where they had been, where they had come from, what they had come through. God is now a God of goodness and because of his goodness and his wonderful works, the psalmist is saying it is time for us to give God praise. So the next time you wake up in the morning, the next time you've been blessed, amen, in any kind of way, we ought to think about glorifying God. What God does to us, many times he wants us to pay it forward. When God has been good to us, he wants us to be good to our fellow men and women. Verse number nine says, for he satisfied the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Now, coming out of the scriptures, this word longing, this word longing, uh, means that they were lacking in water. They, they needed a man to be refreshed with good water. They, they were around salty water. They were around bad and contaminated water, about like we are today. We don't know what's coming through the pipeline. We don't know how contaminated some waters are. But God will give us fresh water. God would give us that water that will satisfy the soul. And aren't you glad that because he is who he is, he is able to fill our hunger. He is able to satisfy us 
with his goodness. And verse 39, as we hasten on, verse 39 gives us the uh, 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 chastisement of those uh, evil ones uh, that rose up against Israel and who may have been a part of the flock coming out of Egypt. And at verse 39 it says, and again, they are menaced and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. So therefore, the things that uh, many of them had gone through at this particular time was bringing them into a position to call on and to trust God. So he says, ministered, amen. Uh, here he is talking about how low they had become, how oppressed they were, going through afflictions and having sorrows that they had to cry and trust in God. In verse number 40, he says, he pours contempt upon princesses and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Now we're looking at people like Nebuchadnezzar who thought that he was a god. You're looking at people like Pharaoh who thought that he was a god. We're looking at Shennacherib, a man who thought he was the chieftain of everything. So when we look back in the history book of time, we can see many of those, uh, and this is where princesses come in, many of those who were in authority who were brought down low. They did not know where they should go. And because he poureth contempt upon them, and causes them to wonder, amen, in the wilderness where there is no way. So, brothers and sisters, divine contempt, blindness, amen, poured out, poured, amen, uh, out that they might have proof of humility. Here they had to turn, they had to look, they had to wonder about the God of our salvation this is where this uh, this right here uh puts me in mind of where we are now we have those who have uh, who he has poured out contempt upon we got people who still will not turn to god they would rather follow someone that don't even go to church don't even call on the name of the lord Amen. To lead this nation in days to come. It's sad when we can show no respect, we can show no kindness, we can have no, no sincerity about compassion upon many of our people in this country. We have those who are hungry. We have those who are homeless. We got those who are sick and afflicted. We got those uh, who now uh, needs help from the government and they are up there fussing and fighting against one another while people are dying and, 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 and wallowing in their sorrows in this country. They don't know where to go. They are trying to find things out of their own way and none of them are praying and asking God for his way. Oh, I noticed that one oh, prophet, 17th century prophet called Nostradamus, he oftentimes said that man has control over his own destiny. All he has to do is turn back to God. As long as we are estranged from God, as long as we are separated from God, blessings will not come. But I thank God for the remnant who don't mind giving him glory, giving him honor, and giving him praise. For God is our way. The Bible says that he is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. So brothers and sisters, he will not lead us in darkness. He will allow the light to shine that we might know the way. 
Oh, aren't you glad that he is the good shepherd? Aren't you glad that he is the mighty God? And here in verse 41, it says, Yet sitteth he the poor on high from affliction, and maketh him families like a flock. Oh, brothers and sisters, saints will be exalted. Oh, as we look at this, amen, coming out of the, the, this particular scripture, he's looking at reversals. He's looking at those who have been over those who have been oppressed, but now the oppressed, amen, as he flips the script, has been exalted. And the promises to the poor is given. Now look at what he says, and maketh him families like a flock. So in other words, he will restore. He will lift them from afflictions. Yet said is he the poor on high from affliction, and maketh him families like a flock. So here we are. In days like these, how is it that those who may not have as much are satisfied, who may not have as much as nobody else are joyful or thankful for what God has blessed them with each and every day? Yes, we are living in oppressive times. We are living in lawless times. We are living in times when the government is taking advantage of the poor, the needy, the middle class, and the one percenters are grinning at the suffering of those beneath. But God is still in control. Verse 42 brings us to these words. The righteous shall see it and rejoice and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Oh, I want us to catch this. Please catch this. Amen. The righteous shall see it. Amen. In other words, God is going to reveal how good he is to those who are righteous, those who are trying to keep his word, trying to follow his commandments, trying to do right by his neighbor. And he will silence those who are unbelievers. He will silence those who are murmurers or who don't want to hold up the bloodstained banner. Aren't you glad that we have a right to praise him, that we have something to thank God for? I'm going to, amen, admonish us that we not murmur, that we not complain at any time being children of God. I know that people can get on your last nerve, but give God the glory for his blessings upon each of us. Every one of you got something to thank God for. Every one of us, amen, God has brought a mighty long way. God has forgiven us of our transgressions and our sins, and he has allowed life to roll on in these mortal bodies. And he has allowed our family members, amen, to still be covered by the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So let me, amen, at this time, even though we are not together in person, even though we are worshiping through YouTube, even though this, this lesson is going all over the land, let me admonish whoever is listening. It could be worse. But aren't you glad God has stayed the enemy? He has given the enemy limitations upon what he can and cannot perform. God, amen, is our refuge. God is our present help in times of trouble. Oh, all we have to do is just cry out to him. All we have to do, amen, is just give him praise. Verse 43, as we hasten on. And bring this lesson to a close. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Now, 
The world does not see the loving kindness of God because they don't worship God. They worship their things. They worship their money. They worship their possessions. And they are short-lived. But here he says, whoso is wise. Now, one that is wise, if I may go back to the Bible, one that is wise is one who knows God and knows that God is God. Amen. Those who think that they are wise, those who think that they are knowledgeable in their own right, shall fall by the wayside. In the 73rd Psalm, uh, Asaph was upset because every time he looked around, the wicked was being blessed, and it seemed like the righteous was going through. But as he continued to complain, the scripture goes down and says, but when I went into the sanctuary of God, that's when I saw their end. In other words, they were on a slippery rock and they would soon fall to destruction. So, amen, Asaph had to shut up. Asaph had to stop being angry. Asaph had to stop complaining. Why are you complaining about the wicked? Why are you envious of what they have? God has something with your name on it. All you got to do is be patient and wait on him. And he says, and will observe these things. Listen at what he's saying. You will be able to see the move of God. I wait on the day of us coming through and coming out of this pandemic to see what God is going to do. Even with us here at Pilgrim Baptist Church. Brothers and sisters, we've been going through. But yet, I want to thank each and every one. Amen. For praising God for his past deliverance. What God done yesterday, we can thank him because we are here today. Oh, I am waiting because many of you have labored. Many of you have been consistent. Many of you have hung in there. Many of you have not stopped listening, not stopped tuning in, has not stopped praising God since the pandemic has taken hold. But oh, I am waiting to see oh, what God is going to do when we come out of this pandemic, when we're able to come back together in the freedom of worshiping as a congregation. But let us start by worshiping him now. We don't wait till we get back to praising. We don't wait till we come back together to praising. We're together watching one another, amen, as we watch this on YouTube. Everyone that gets on at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning or 7 p.m. on Wednesday evening, we are still worshiping God together. And if we are worshiping together, we can praise him together. God will inhabit the praises of his people, no matter where we are. Amen. He told the, uh, uh, amen, the, the, the Samaritan woman. He said, the day is going to come when you will not worship him in the mount called Gehazi or in the temple in Jerusalem, but you will worship God wherever you are in spirit and in truth. You don't have to be in the building in order to give God praise. You don't have to, amen, be sitting next to your neighbor to give him praise. All you got to do is be thankful for what he's already done for you. Then he says, and we will observe these things. Even they shall understand the love and kindness of God. So in other words, he is going to manifest his goodness and love and kindness when we come through this pandemic. So let me admonish you. Be careful. Don't get loose at this time about where you go. Continue to wear your mask. Continue your hand washing. Continue social distancing. Amen. Because it's not over yet. 
Amen. There are those who are still hard-headed. There are those who still won't take the vaccine. There are those who are refusing, amen, to take the shot, not caring for others, not caring for even their own loved ones. Brothers and sisters, this is a time that we give God praise for past deliverance. And if, we, if he has delivered us out of our troubles before, don't you know he'll do it now? All we have to do is be patient and wait on him. Oh, I'm excited about this because he says it will be manifested unto us. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Oh, can you just imagine how we're going to be when all of us can get back together again? When we all get together. What a time it's going to be. And I thank God for each and every one of you. I give him praise for your stick to I give you praise for continuing to support the ministry here at Pilgrim Baptist Church. God has done wonderful things even though we've been out from being together. God has moved in a mighty way. So, brothers and sisters, continue to praise God for not only his past, but we have to praise him for his present. And we can go ahead and give him praise for what he's going to do in the future. So, maybe there's someone. I always give this call to discipleship because we never know who has been hurting. We never know who has been wanting. We never know who has been crying out to God out of despair. There are those who are troubled in their minds. There are those who are troubled in their spirit. There are those who are brought low. There are those who are going through depression. There are those who are going through abusive relationships. There are those who are going through addictions and, and all types of problems, amen, that is facing us today. But don't you know we serve a God who is able to bring you out and bring you through. So if there's someone who is listening to this old preacher right now and you would like to have Jesus in your life, would you repeat after me? Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to come into my life. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that he was buried. And I believe that on the third day he rose again, having not some power, but all power in his hands. And I believe that he is able to cleanse me, to mold me, and shape me into what he would have me to be. So I invite you to come into my life now. And I will give you glory, honor, and praise. It's in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the risen Christ, we pray. Would you say amen? And I admonish you to read your Bibles. Get in a Bible study that you may know more about the goodness of God. And remember, Pastor Rector loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Have a blessed evening in the Lord.